So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this wonderful morning. Um, on behalf of Berlinale Talents, uh, we all invite you uh, for this panel discussion. Close up Germany. Um, the panel has a tradition since a couple of years, uh, but we did it in the past years uh, behind closed, uh, only for talents. And uh, this year we thought maybe we change it a little bit and open also this panel to the public. So not only participants from Berlinale Talents are here in the audience uh, today, only uh, also guest festival guests and other uh, participants here from the market are here. Um, before you will introduce uh, the panelists here. I would like to say some words about Henning Kamm and about your production company. Henning will um, moderate uh, the next uh, one hour. And uh, Henning is a former participant from Berlinale Talents as well. Um, you have a production company based in Hamburg and Berlin. Uh, Henning started very early um, within a short film competition we did a couple of years ago uh, within the Talent Campus. And uh, with a short film, um, a German-Indian uh, co-production, uh, you won uh, the German uh, Documentary Short Film Award a uh, couple of years ago. And I think this was also one a starting point for um, the production company and you did a lot of Inter international co-productions uh, in the past years. Uh, you had uh, two films last year in the Panorama and the Brazilian-German co-production uh, Breide Futura from uh, Karim Ainush um, in the competition of the Berlinale. Um, so this is one example of a wonderful career here from a producer uh, based in Germany. And uh, yeah, I would like uh, to uh, I give you the microphone now and uh, please introduce uh, also the partners here. Uh, Medienbot, um, you are one of the founding partners of Berlinale Talents. Robert Bosch Stiftung, you, will, uh, you are here with the film prize uh, for international corporate collaboration between Arab and German producers. Um, so we will see also the, the winner of this year's film prize later in, in the how, how one at uh, starting at five. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. I know my favorite director, Darren Aronofsky, has a panel at the moment, so I'm actually wondering what are you guys doing here? But obviously, I'm, I'm happy that you came. So very warm welcome. Before I um, introduce the panel, just a couple of words. What we're going to do today is give you an idea of how does it work to work with or to co-produce uh, with Germany. Um, um, not all the ins and outs, we don't want to bore you with the technical um, details, but um, from my experience I can say that it's always uh, great if your partner, your production partner, um, actually kind of knows what's going on in, in, in how to maneuver uh, uh, co-production with, uh, with Germany. Um, uh, so my question would be to be beginning at you. Who's a producer? Okay, that's good. And, and how many, because Christina was wondering, how many people, how many talents are in here? Ah, good, so it's really, it's really, it's really mixed. That's wonderful. Well, one thing I can tell you uh, right up front is that Germany is the most liberal country to co-produce with, so that is, that is great news for you. Uh, we'll get more into the details uh, once we start, but now let me introduce um, the panelists my fellow colleagues for the past years. I'm very happy to see you again. Um, on, the far, on my far right, on your far left, it's Christine Berg. She's the deputy director of the FFA, which is the Filmförderungsanstalt, a wonderful long German word um, that we're so famous for. Um, it is our national uh, film fund. Um, and we have Marietta Rissenbeck. She's the managing director of German films, which is the organization that is taking care um, to promote German films, but German, what German films are, we're gonna talk about later because it's not only a German film, but it can be a whole lot more. And then Veronika Grob, she's a um, funding consultant at Medienbot, Berlin Brandenburg, um, Germany's second or third, we don't really know at the moment, um, biggest regional fund with an estimate budget of what, 35 million, 32 million, something like this? Oh, 26. Damn it. I thought it was more. Um, <laughs> no, and uh, MediaBot has, uh, they are actually involved in 10 films, I think, that are, that are world premieres uh, at Berlinale um, this year. So 
They're a big, big, big supporter of international co-productions. Um, yes, and then we have Frank Albers. He's the program manager uh, of culture uh, at the uh, Robert Bosch Stiftung, Robert Bosch Foundation, which is the biggest foundation in, in Germany. And he runs a wonderful program, and he actually founded a program called Co-Production Prize. Something very particular for all you guys from uh, the Middle East. Um, he's the go-to guy. He's done amazing things for uh, the collaboration in between um, Europe, uh, well, Eastern Europe and Germany. Um, they're responsible for uh, a lot of great films, um, a lot of wonderful relationships. I bet a couple of babies. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that as well. Yep. And um, yes, so these are. This is the eclectic mix of people um, that um, that you'll get to meet today, and they will tell you all about um, what it means to work together uh, with Germany. Um, I did it differently the last years. This year I would go chronologically, so step through step, what does it mean, and how do you start on making a film? So um, the first question would be, how do you find a partner? And um, Maria Drissenbeck, they're promoting the finished films, but I think you also do a lot of things um, to bring people together before they even start working together. Yes, that's actually true. As we work internationally, we are traveling to very many countries, presenting finished uh, German films, festivals of German cinema we organize in various cities. And when you travel so much, you also hear about people who say, I'm looking for a co-producer in Germany. So you start thinking, I'm in Brazil now, and the Brazilians tell me they're looking for co-producers in Germany. Maybe it's something we could organize to get some networking done. So I come back to Germany, and I talk to the FFA, Christina Berg, the regional funds, I ask them whether they think for the German producers, Brazil could be an interesting country to work with. And if they say yes, we organize something. So like three years ago at the Sao Paulo Film Festival, the Mostra of Sao Paulo, we had the Film Cup between German and Brazilian producers. Brazilian producers per, uh, presented their projects, the German producers presented their projects, and there actually came maybe not of the projects presented, but I think actually um, you found your Brazilian co-producer at that event or around that. You were there. You were there. I was there, yeah. but in and all honesty, I didn't find the partner that we already had, but I found new partners and I built my personal network, you know, building personal relationships. That's, that's actually where it all starts. And it's thanks to initiatives like yours that we actually get to meet. So yes, I met a couple of partners there. Because actually, if you are a producer, the most important is to find another producer who can give you money, but who has also the same thoughts about what kind of films you want to make. You don't want to work with someone who has a completely different point of view on the type of films, the concept for films you want to make. So it's the most difficult part to find this person who is in your line of thinking, in your line of filmmaking, and who is a trustworthy partner. So we, we actually think we cannot offer enough events to find this person because it's a really, you know, it's a tricky thing. So a while ago, when we did our Festival of German Films in Moscow, there were some things going on, a bilateral Russian-German co-production fund and some co-development ideas, and we organized uh, a meeting of Russian and German producers. We did something similar with France. Friend France, we did on a regular basis, once a, year, once a year. So even though we're not really focusing on this kind of work, if we feel that the German producers would benefit from such an event, we do organize with other partners like the regional funds and with the FFA various events, but they have to be abroad because we're, German Films is not supposed to work in Germany, so it also always has to be abroad. But I think it's a very unique opportunity to meet people and to get to know new projects and new partners. Well, so if you have an agency in your country that promotes your, um, your films, tell them to reach out to German films to set up something like this, because um, that's where you meet potential partners if, they, if you have the same vibe. Um, Christina Back, what, sorry, <laughs> what, um, what does, what, how do you foster, how do you foster um, co-productions? How do you, how do you get people together, working closely together with, um, with German films, of course, but I guess you also do other things to facilitate uh, German international co-productions. Yeah, that's right, but um, this is not our main um, subject. What we do, we 
bring together some producers from Germany and from other countries, but really we point it out. So it means, for example, we give money to this um, uh, meeting from, with France, and we have also a subsidy, a little fund for this kind of co-productions. And um, we have also a fund with Italy right now. We started uh, at the beginning of this year. And, um, but we are not, the, subs the real subsidy to bring um, producers together, for us it's very important that you have a producer and we are the last piece. Um, we do this a little bit, that's right, and this is the reason why you ask me, <laughs> I think. But um, our main focus is really that you can come to us if you, if you have a project with a German producer and he can apply for subsidy. So we give money, um, real money, and I think um, this is our main thing. And but you set the legal framework as well, don't you? With the treaties that you, with the, with the yes. treaties that you... But this is another, another field, I think, um, because what maybe, I'm not really sure if you know about all these treaties, you know, because we are the national funding, so we have a law and um, we are based on a law. So for us, this is very important. And what we have in Germany, I think you have it all over the world, we have treaties, that mean that there are two countries and they say, we want to work together. We want to work together um, in the film industry. For example, yesterday, we signed, or not we, but uh, the government signed a treaty between um, Netherlands and Germany. And what we do is that we, if we see, or if, for example, Mayet says, oh, there's a country, Brazil, they want to work with us, and um, the producers also say, oh, it's very important that we work together with this country, and we have to make something together. And the um, industry says, it's very important that we do more. Then what we do then, we go to the government and we said, we need something like a treaty. Sometimes we said, we need something like a fund so that we really can give um, a field that you can work together. Um, this is what we are doing. So what we have now is we have a treaty with, I think, 26 or 28 countries. The new, newest is <coughs> Netherlands. Um, Brazil, we have one. Um, Right now, we're thinking about China. Um, if we want to do something with China. Um, so this is what we're doing, that's right. But I think um, that the national, uh, the regional fundings, these are the real fundings to come together. So um, we are on the platform, on the formal platform, and we give money. But um, between this, this is, these are the regional fundings. Yes, they would have, you would have been my next, my next partner in crime. Mm -hmm. Veronica, what can you do? Or do you do you get asked, do you get asked a lot by, by foreign producers? And, and how we do you respond? We do, but um, I think it's the same thing. We don't do the matchmaking really, okay. because um, I think the producer have to find themselves at, like at platforms like yours, for example, at the Berlinale here at the Talents or. Um, no, not so much the matchmaking. We are also like the last one in the in the in the row giving subsidy in the end to the German producer. Always to the German producers who co-produce with um, um, with other uh, countries. What we do is like we have a special focus um, on Eastern Europe and on Turkey. There we have like co-development funds with other partners. Um, but um, we are open, of course, for every country um, applying for, um, for funding. In, in, yeah. It's interesting because this is an example for how, uh, diverse, it, uh, how diverse German f uh, funding is because the, you're right, the, the regional, it's the regional funds who, who are the ones who come on board more than, than, a, than a federal fund would. Um, I know from, uh, from Hamburg that they actually they do have a list of producers that they that they hand out. So if you were asking the fund in Hamburg, you say, well, I have a project that is very, very much suitable um, to work with a producer from Hamburg. Can you actually suggest someone? The fund in Hamburg does have a list of people with, I don't know, 15 or 20 names or however, um, that they hand out so you can then reach out. This is how I actually found in Israel oh, co-production, for example. We have this list also. Ah, it's it's okay. actually a list we do together, all the regional funders. Ah, really? Ah, yeah, you'll find it here and in, in the market. Um, yeah, we do have this. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, see? Okay, so it's not that, di uh, not that diverse. 
Um, now to the very special case of Frank Albers. I, I know that you have a lot to, to, to tell about. <laughs> very special. No. Yeah. Oh, good. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Um, um, yeah, you are truly special when it comes to how to bring people together. Please tell us what does the Robert Bosch Foundation do? Yeah, um, thanks for being so special. Um, um, as we, we present the uh, private section, of course, we um, are definitely much smaller in comparison to our national fund or the, the regional funds, and that's why we have to focus ourselves on specific regions. And we did focus on Eastern Europe for the past 10 years, where we uh, tried to support more or less successful um, German and Eastern European co-productions in the field of animation, documentary, and uh, short fiction. And after 10 years of uh, supporting Eastern European German projects, we just swi uh, switched the focus to the Arab world and started three years ago. And what we do in between Germany and the Arab world is we do match chain people. Uh, that's maybe, probably maybe the um, biggest difference between you and uh, us, because we figured out that it's very difficult for, let's say, a, a director from, from, uh, from Jordan or from Morocco or whatever, find a German producer. Uh, of course, it can meet on festivals like Berlinale or wherever, but it's still very difficult. Traveling is very expensive and um, communication, it might be difficult. So that's why we thought about inviting German producers, young, talented German producers, to the Arab world. And we have partners in the Arab world, in Jordan, uh, in Dubai, the International Film Festival there, in Cairo and other places, and match them with directors, scriptwriters from the region. And out of this, um, hopefully, they will join teams and find partnerships and apply for a film prize we run, uh, Henning already mentioned. And this film prize, of course, is a prize. At the end, it's called a prize, but it's more or less uh, a funding. Um, we support animation, short fiction, and documentaries. But to reach this fund, you have to go through difficult, uh, different education phases. It means you get uh, trainings in how to pitch a project in front of an international jury, how to uh, develop your script on an international level, how to uh, make a proper budget plan, um, how do television rights function, and so on. And these lectures are run by international experts, either here in Berlin uh, or in the Arab world. And that's what we do in matching. So it's because for us it's important just to bring people together. As I said, uh, representing the private section or sector, um, we have another motivation maybe, to, so to say, because our motivation comes from international relations, international understanding. Um, that's why we just have this specific focus on bringing teams together, bringing young, talented filmmakers together, and help them to realize a film afterwards, but the main focus is on matching. And uh, of course, as Henning said, um, during this project market, as we call it, in the Arab world and here in Berlin, um, you meet a lot, of, many different people. You pro might work together on different fields out of our program as well. And um, that's a very important thing, just to get you together and uh, have you in a very close, concentrated room, not on a huge, big festival where you just maybe get lost, um, be concentrated, and we organize these meetings for you, these one-to-one -one meetings or whatever you need. Um, and that's, I think it's quite effective on it. And after we just maybe just match some people, they can even just contact you afterwards and um, uh, have, have further opportunities than we can offer. I think I have to complete the picture because it looks like, <laughs> sorry, ever, it looks like the Bosch Stiftung um, match only. And, uh, no, we can, no. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, not about you, it's only to complete it. Um, so the subsidy does do a lot um, to bring producers together. Um, it's, you know, it's our main thing is really to give money, but what we are doing, we not not only the FFA, but also the subsidies from the region. We made, for example, we don't, we don't give money if you want to travel, but what we do is we give a platform. For example, if you were in Cannes, we have a breakfast, and so we invite people that they can meet each other. Or what we did, I think, two years ago, 
we invite people from Brazil or from, from Netherlands or from other countries and bring them together with producers. I think while we both are a little bit shy, <laughs> it's because what we don't do is that we say, okay, you're a producer and you want to look for someone in Germany and we know what you are and what you want to do and then we know that he has the same experience like you and we bring you together. This is what, we don't do this, but what we're doing is that we see, oh, there are talents. There are a lot of talents in one country, and we bring them together with our talents. This is what we are doing. It's not that we really match, but um, and specifically. But what, for example, Medium Board, what they are doing is that this is a really wonderful program, and we give also money to this. <laughs> it's um, that um, they bring, they they have an art and residence with Israel that they, for example, they pay for one person from Israel and they have the chance to come for three months to Berlin and they can write a, a script here mm -hmm. during this time or afterwards and they can meet people. This is really focus on one person. But normally we have this kind, I, I can say platform or, or meetings and we have, for example, yesterday I heard it this morning, we had a meeting in our house, I didn't know. <laughs> so with Finnish and Danish people and producers from Germany. So this is what we are doing. Um, and I think this is very, very successful. And what happened in Germany that everything comes together, for example, as you told us, um, Mariette hears something in another country and then she comes back and tells us, oh, what do you think about this? Um, so we want to work together and we try to figure out what is good for our industry. Because the main thing, and this is a, also one reason why we are so shy both, for us um, the important thing is the producer in Germany. And we want, we want to support the producer in Germany. They want, we want that they find their partners. Um, this is what Mariette said already. This okay. is only to complete it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So if you want to have a breakfast in Cannes, uh, you, should ask, you should ask Bob F for an invitation. Yeah, but it's Focus Germany. We are not Focus Germany. It's oh, yeah, that's true. true. Yeah, yes, so it's yes, a regional yes, yes, yes. plan, yeah. Okay, let's say you found a partner, either through your own trips and uh, personal network or at one of those events. Um, obviously, then it's about the money that we already that we already mentioned. Um, I'd like to ask you, well, the funds, more or less. When does it actually make sense to um, to come to you with your German partner? That's the most important piece of information. And what are you looking for? When does it make sense, and what are you looking for, Veronica? Um, when it makes sense, when the project is ready to get to shoot, <laughs> then it makes sense. Um, yeah, the, the most important thing really is is um, that that it's um, um, that the German producer comes to us. Nobody else can apply. So um, if there is a project, no, not ready to shoot. I mean, they should come earlier and discuss the project with us, of course. Um, you, um, but they should be ready to apply, and it's mostly like uh, production money they apply to, not so much development money. If it's not like, depends, it always depends. It's like um, if, if, if it's a, um, really a German project in, in majority or, or in minority, um, that depends. And then the German producer um, comes to us to apply for money and it should be ready like also around um, how the whole project gets financed um, in Germany, but also outside of Germany. And if the German money is in minority, how you call that in, in yeah, English? Minority, minority, Min population. Min minority Then um, the money, the foreign money, so to speak, um, should be in place, more or less. This is uh, also, I think, an important thing. Because we are not the first one then um, to, to, to fund a project if we are not the main funders. So. Yeah, that's a very, very, very important piece of information. Mm. Um, I also know this from my own experience. Um, when my, when my international partner says, "Come on, you know, let's go and ask," you know, it's a beautiful project. Let's go and ask mm. your, your fund for money, you know, and uh, he needs to have his money in place. 
there needs to be substantial interest out of the originating country for us to actually be able to talk to our funders. We can talk to them beforehand, obviously, present and kind of get an idea whether it, might that, whether it makes sense. Um, but to get serious, we need money in place, most of it. So in the minority co-production, we're, we're the last ones in, more or less. How is it with, what are you looking for? What does the FFA look for? Because you don't do many, you don't do many international co-productions. No. No. Um, if you look at the funding reports, there's, there's very few. So what are you looking for? Yeah. For good projects, uh -huh. um, that's <laughs> yeah. This question is very complicated for us because that's right. Um, our main focus is on German projects. Um, we support also international um, projects, but it's not really. We have only for for production. We have not so much money, so um, we have to really select. And what we like is a, a project has something to do with Germany. If it is not a financing co financing co-production, oh, what is this? Financial. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so we do international co-productions, but um, you have to come to us and we have to talk about the project because um, this is what I can say for, for, German, for, for the FFA. But I'm not, sorry, I, I have to go one step back because I'm not really sure if you really understand how the system is in Germany because it's just a little bit complicated. We have a lot of, Yay. Yeah, we have a lot of money and here too of, um, of this lot of people. It's only a short, a brief um, overview for you because um, we have, I think we have 10 subsidies, or maybe eight, I'm not sure, but um, you see, I don't know. Um, we have two systems. The one is the national system, and then we have the regional funds. So the regional funds are in every area, for example, Berlin, Hamburg, um, Nordrhein-Westphalia, Bavaria. We have regional fundings, and if you want to go there and want to shoot there, for example, and you spend money in their area, and you have a producer from this area, then you can, not you, but the producer in Germany, they can apply. So it has to, you have to spend money there, and you have, your project has to do something with the area. This is only an overview, please. There are like um, <laughs> two things that are really important, like the money getting spent in the area, and also the shooting day, if it's possible. But we also have projects who are not shot in, yeah. in Berlin, Brandenburg, because doesn't make sense or something. Yeah. So this is the first system and then we have a sec second system. This is the national uh, level and the national level has three, um, three subsidies but only two funds are important for you. Um, it's the first one is the DFFF. I think this is really the important one um, because this is an automatic funding that we have in Germany since now, oh let me see, eight years I think. Um, it means if you have a German producer, if you have a distributor and you shoot in, or you spend money in Germany, then you can apply or the German producer can apply for this subsidy. There are a lot of other rules and this is really only the, the main the topic. But um, this is very, very good funding because it's automatic, you have no jury, there's no one who said, oh, your script, we don't like your script. Um, but it's also not that easy to get the money. So really, the first thing is you need a German producer. But this is the last piece in your financing. This is the first thing. And then we have um, the FFA, this is our funding. And uh, we have two kinds of funding. The one is also an automatic funding. This is not really for international co-productions only. If the German producer has this money, then he can spend it for your project. And the other one, this is what you asked me. Um, this is a jury. We have 30 pe people who make the decision about the project. And we have something like um, 13, 13 million per year, or maybe 14 million per year, something like this. And um, the jury will read your script. We will see how's the financing, do you have a distributor? Do you have a broadcaster in Germany? So we look for all these kind of things, and you're absolutely right. We are the, 
also the last piece, and it's very, very important if you have international co-production, if you come to the FFA and you don't have the money from the other country, you have no chance. Um, so you need this money at first. And then you can, then you have to look if you have, for example, a distributor, and then you can come to us. And this means that we look only for, we have only a few um, projects, and then we support, because you asked me, um, then we support, for example, with Aus uh, projects with Austria, with Switzerland, um, sometimes Poland, sometimes, but it's all, not only, but it's the European projects. Yeah, and it has to have a chance on the German market. This is our focus. What we are looking for, projects we, which have a chance that the audience here will pay for this film. This is every time the same. But you, uh, you can have, any, the film can have any language, right? You can, pardon me? The film can have any language. That yes. Is, that is one yes. very, very yeah. important Yeah, you can shoot in any, in any language, but it's very important. You have to um, submit, no. Dub it. Sub, dub it, yeah. same. <laughs> Veronica, I know that uh, Medium Board has a little more international focus yeah, and is, can has a different, <coughs> also has a different focus when it comes to what, what kind of projects you support. What can kind you say of project? I think it's also important, I mean, you have to have a German distributor um, applying at Medium Board. Um, this is the same thing. Of course, it's also important for us that project, it's always important that the project finds its, its audience. But... Um, um, I think we also support, um, for us it's also important that we see like uh, that the project has um, the opportunity to travel, to travel abroad, then German films comes in again, and uh, to be successful on festivals. It's always like you have to, to, to find your audience if it's a, it's a festival movie or an audience movie in cinema who um, and works there very good. So, yeah, we do also films that we think that um, are, and also co-productions that are um, artistic, that they can show something, that their projects worth doing, even if we don't believe that they do a lot of money at the cinema. That is one very, very important piece of And what maybe is also important for us, and maybe also for the FFR, is that um, for us it's always, uh, also, um, we support the German producer of it. And I mean not only financially, but we think it's important that the German or the Berlin-based producer also can work um, with other countries, with other people, with other talents, um, and go out, yeah, go out in the world. Okay, but what kind of, are there any other conditions that, that need to be in place for you to fund a project? You already talked about the spend in your region, obviously, that depends from region to region. In, in Berlin, there's a minimum spend of 100%, but I can already tell you um, that you definitely need to deliver more than that. In, in Hamburg, it's a minimum spend of 100, 150%, but um, if you don't show an, uh, an, a spend of 200%, you hardly stand a chance. So um, what's written on paper is not you should always take that with a little bit of salt and push it up by 20% in order to have a real chance. But, um, and the shooting days you mentioned, is there anything else in terms of the creative package that, uh, that you were asking for? In terms of crew or... Do you think about something? Um, I'm no, about but it's, it's, it's the creative package. Of course, it's also um, important if there are talents working on the project, not only the producers, but also, for example, like the cast and uh, the crew. If they're like charm talent involved, it's um, the chances are better and better, of course. And you know that with the regional effect, how much money gets spent, it also depends on the projects. If you have like a, a small art house project that is uh, not shot in Berlin, then it's maybe not so important. But we also have like the big international co-production in Babelsberg, like the American movies, and there, of course, the regional spend is enormous because they don't they have big, big budget, everything is shot maybe in Babelsberg, if it's good, like Tarantino, for example, or um, George Clooney last year, and they spent a lot in the region, and then um, the regional effect, so to speak, is, is, is very, very high, and there, 
and this is very important for this kind of projects. But maybe not of, with, the, with the little art films. Can you, can you just name a couple of projects that are here at, uh, at the festival, just to give an idea of the, of the range that, that you're involved with? Here at the festival, for example, uh, in the competition, we have like Victoria, Sebastian Schiffer, uh, Als wir träumten, Andreas Dresden, of course. Um, but then we also have uh, in Forum a film called, this might be interesting for co-production, a film called um, um, Sueñan los Androides. And this looks like a Spanish movie. It's shot in Spain, it's a Spanish director, but he lives in Germany. And also the production company is in Germany. So if you see this movie, you think it's a Spanish movie, but we funded it and it's, I think, only German money in it. Okay. It's a very small uh, experimental movie. And that's it. Um, developed at the script station three years ago. It's the film called Petting Sue. And uh, Mika Marge, it's a German US co production, and um, also Medium Board found this, uh, found this project. And the film is wonderful, so please go. The premiere is on <laughs> Tuesday evening in the Panorama. We want to also screen this here in the alumni uh, screenings, but it was not possible because of the world premiere. But this is really it's outstanding. And the uh, German Film Fund uh, founded uh, since the beginning the script station. So this is one really a great example of success. Yes? In the beginning, in the development here, uh, uh, downstairs, okay. here yeah. in the house, yeah. really everything started here. And it's actually, and, soup. And, after, and after the Berlinale, the film will be shown in Austin, and Mika Maggi is traveling there, and we're financing her trip, because it's a German film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you know so, how everybody is involved. <laughs> That's a perfect, thanks for bringing yeah. that up. I, I, I didn't know about this, this is, this is wonderful. So you can tell that what I said at the beginning, Germany is really the most liberal country to co-produce with because we don't really care what language it is, where the, where the talent comes from, you know, what kind of setup it is. It just needs to make sense for all partners involved um, to, to get all those wonderful um, um, ways of, of being supported. So once the film is done, uh, maybe Mariette, you can say a little more what, what happens then with a film that has the stamp of being you know, German, even though it might Actually, only be 30%. Christina sort of brought me to this idea, we maybe should discuss what is a German film. Please. Very briefly. Yeah, yeah, please, go. Because we have a big problem sometimes with it, due to the fact that there is so much international engagement of German funds and, and um, producers, a film can have the German stamp even if there's, let's say, only 20% German money in it. So it can be a Mexican director or Mexican cast shot in Mexico and there's 20% German money because they did post-production post in Germany and then it's a German film. But for German films, for us, it's very difficult <coughs> to promote this film as a German film abroad. If we show this film in our Festival of German Films in Paris, no one knows why we're showing a Mexican film. So for some activities, we always demand for the certificate of origin and the BAFA certificate. BAFA is like an export confirmation, which gives you exactly the percentage of German financing in a film. And without this BAFA certificate, it's impossible for German producers to get like reference funding if I remember well. So, so you need this certificate if you want to use other income from Germany, um, maybe for future projects based on this project you have just made. So we, we, let's say your project is majority creatively talent-wise German. You have maybe a German producer, but it doesn't have to be a German director. We can also have a German film with an international director, but who has been working in Germany. German films contact a lot of festivals. We organize screenings for all the most important festivals of the world. They come to Munich, they watch the new German films. We discuss what type of film they're looking for because festival presentation is so important to make the audience, the international press, aware of your film. Without a festival presentation for an independent art house film, it's almost impossible to get real visibility. And but this can also be at a smaller festival, it doesn't have to be in Venice. 
we work with a lot of, let's say, national festivals who have an important role in their country, where there is, inter where there is a press attendancy, and if you're there, maybe a distributor picks it up, so it's the best case scenario that you get exploitation in a country. And of course, in order to sell the film properly, it's also very necessary to have a world sales company who has the contacts to all the international distributors, who knows what the price level could be for your film, which uh, distributor could be a good uh, distributor and make the most of it. And in all these phases, we support the, we support the sales companies, maybe sometimes to travel to a certain market. And if a distributor has bought a film, and this has the German stamp with major German talent, you can, we can also support it for the distribution. The distributor in France can apply with us for a distribution support program. And we can give up to 50,000 euros to help the distributor in marketing the film in his country. So that's from the beginning to the end. Very quickly now. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Um, Frank, with you, once the films are finished, that are, that are being done in your program, how, I, don't, I don't think that it, that, that it ends there, you support for the, for the films, but you, you do work with them, don't you? We do work with them. Uh, maybe I should say, if I may, even in our case, um, only the German producer is allowed to apply. Uh, as even if it has to be an international production, uh, only because it, we're talking about tax-free German money, in it, and so we are only allowed to spend it on the German producer. But, uh, that's a different, we do not ask for any regional effect or something, but the money has to, has to be spent in Germany and the partner country. So if you as a German producer cooperate with, a, let's say, an Egyptian director, the money has to be spent half in Germany and in Egypt. So if you, for instance, do the shooting in Egypt, the post-production has to be done in Germany or vice versa. Um, that's one of the regulations we have. Um, as soon as the film is finished, to come back to your question, of course, um, we try to, to support you to bring it to the festival worldwide. We cooperate with television stations. RT is RT, you know, the German French television stations, our media partner. Uh, they at least they buy one of the films we support per year. Sometimes they buy all of them, depends on the quality, of course. Um, what we're doing as well is just to invite the producers, directors, as we are talking about in our case, about young professionals uh, to master classes on international film academies just to talk about the idea and the sense of co-producing uh, what, what what is the benefit of, of out of a co-production for you as an artist um, artistical wise but as well as economical wise and um, what we're doing as well because we want to motivate others to think more internationally in, in, in terms of film that's why we just let the films travel. And of course, um, like I said, one of our main criteria to select a film, and it's selected through an international jury, um, is the quality of, 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 of the topic, of course, and uh, the realization. And we ask everybody for new topics, for new stories, for new perspectives. And um, at the end, you can have su success stories like uh, a German, Croatian, Bosnian co production as a chicken who won the European Film Award last December as best short film. Um, done by a very young team, young German, Croatian, Bosnian team. And this film, for instance, uh, we use next to this automatical festival career for um, presentations on the idea of film prices. So that's a bit different uh, to you. We use it as our own um, educational work and material and tools, so to say. So we use your work a little bit for our idea. Uh, if we, well, we allow, if we ask for permission in, in advance. <laughs> I guess it's only fair if you finance it. Yeah, to yeah we, we, we try to. Um, but I think it's important for you as well. Um, we do, of course, the magic, as you said at the beginning, but we do not force anybody into a co-production. Um, so um, we invite you to take part in, on the platforms. And if you apply, the, your team has to be ready. So we do not match you in that case that we say you German producer have to cooperate with this Jordanian director because we want you to do uh, or we think you might you might function well together we just offer a platform and if you use it it's fine you're invited to do so and that's it yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say that no 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 okay. 
It's actually, that's actually a good point. What after you said. ten years after, here, with after this. all these years, you still have. We're we're sitting since ten years, I think, here. Yes. Um, so we know. Is it each our other, jubilee? So, yeah. And we are kidding. Huh? Is it our jubilee? Is it? I think so. Right? Oh, there's a champagne afterwards. But this is still all improvised. This is, they're not pushing buttons and just say the words that they've been saying for for ten years. I can tell you. Um, no, but it's actually a good point that you mentioned. We don't force you to co-produce because we've been talking about co-productions all the time. And there's one, one thing that I would like to say is, if you can make the, the movie by yourself, out of your own country, even with a little more money than you would have in a co-production, go for it. Because co-producing with another country is, is expensive, for one. It's, everything gets more expensive. And you spend a whole lot more other resources on making it happen, be it time, be it love, be it hate, tears, whatever. Laughter, that's good. But, um, but if you can make movies just out of your own country, and be it for the smaller budget, keep that in mind. Co-productions are not the only way to make films. Um, they're a great way to make films, and, um, but they're not the only way to make films. I'd, uh, before we wrap it up, before we open it up actually to your questions, if you have some, um, I'd like to know, what is your motivation to, to promote and to support co-productions? What, what is the idea behind it? Um, because Germany does so much, so I was always thinking, is there a political dimension to it? Is there a humanistic dimension to it? Um, yes. I think there are two things. One is um, you can, um, if you want to finance a film, you can finance in Germany a film up to six million. Everything which is over six million, you have to look for other kind of financing. So um, it makes sense if you have a big budget film that you go to another country, for, for example, Austria or whatever. Um, so you, because you need the money. This is the first motivation. And I think the second motivation is that you have a project which, where the script or maybe the crew or whatever, it makes sense that you are looking for someone outside. This is. I'm, I'm someone from the subsidy, so I'm not a producer. But what I fear sometimes, it, it's very good for the project, because the project is in the middle of everything. And sometimes it's good for the project if someone from another country looks at the project and works with the project, works with the producer. So and sometimes it's very good for the project if you have a crew from another country, because um, then it gets more colors, you know? Um, so I think it's, these are the two motivations from my point of view, um, that you need, sometimes you need money, um, and sometimes it's really that the project wants to go to another country, and it wants to have more um, colors, so I can't really explain it, I can't explain my own language, so, um, but I hope that you understand what I mean. It's, um, some projects need it. I think, uh, we have uh, like a, an expression for it, like natural co-production and, and, and not natural co-production. The natural one is, is that that really needs to travel. If it's because um, it's getting shot in another country and not in Germany, but you know, takes place somewhere else, or if the director is coming from someplace else or whatever, but it's like um, there's a need, an, an inner need for the project to travel. And then there are projects who, you think, okay, it's just, they also come to us just for the money. It's also okay, of course, and it's not only projects that are more than six millions, I think, it's also uh, smaller projects because it's, um, it can be also difficult to finance smaller projects in, in one country. Yeah? Yeah. Motivation, of course, is international understanding. Uh, especially the motivation for our foundation is that after the, the Second World War, Germany had, was trying to build up new good relationships to its neighbors, and starting with Eastern Europe, starting with France in the beginning, and now it's uh, developed up to the Arab world. And of course, there are stories in this content which needs to be traveled. And there's one film we are doing together, uh, by the way. It's this one. Uh, you can see it on this picture. It's a uh, it's a, a documentary shot in Gaza. It's about surfing in Gaza. It's um, it's, it's a wonderful project, and uh, you're going to see. The, I'm allowed to I'll make some advertisement about it. Um, you're going to see an excerpt of it at the award ceremony, our award ceremony, in this afternoon at 5 o'clock, so you're invited to that. And you're going to see a small excerpt of a Serbian film from Gaza, which is done by us together. Yes. 
with a wonderful team that uh, finished shooting in December. And you can see Gaza from a completely different perspective out of all these cliches you have about war in Gaza, Palestine, Israeli conflict, doesn't count. The only thing they have the surfers dream about is to move to Hawaii and having a surfing career. And, uh, and that's just wonderful. That's great. May I ask you a question? What is your sure. motivation? You producer, yes. what is your motivation? Ah. <laughs> well, no, I, I grew up on, on, on international, my, my father was a film buff, so he would watch a lot of movies and I would watch movies with him, but it wasn't a lot of German movies, I, I grew up with international movies. And by the time that I figured out I wanted to become a producer, German cinema didn't really give me... Yeah, I'm sorry. That's why that's why I had such a look on my face because it really didn't. I, I, it was always international cinema was always more appealing to me, and I thought and and together with my company partner, we met at a at a, at a European um, program. We wanted to tell universal international stories to an international audience. That was that was always our idea. We were more interested in telling universal stories that come from a very local setup and bringing it to, again, a worldwide audience. And that was, that was, our, um, that's, that was our idea. We, we didn't feel comfortable doing German melodramas, to be honest, because that was the prevailing films that were coming out of Germany at the time. Um, that has changed, luckily. And um, we are starting to, to develop a German, German project, actually, but that's the first time for and We've been to, working together for seven years, so it was, it was more the way we were socialized, on which kind of cinema we grew up, and kind of the stories that we wanted to tell, that we thought there's, there, there, there's more interesting stories outside of Germany for some reason. Um, if we had more time, maybe we could reflect on why that is. Um, um, but that's about to change, I think. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a feeling, and that's also what I get from, uh, from colleagues that are asking, why there's so few stories coming out of Germany that actually speak to an international audience, that tell us something about your culture, about your state of mind, uh, you know, of the society and such. And I think we're at a point of time where, where things are, 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 change, are changing. So we start doing German projects all of a sudden again. So yeah, it's, my, it's my own individual reason. Um, I'd like to, Christina? another question. It's, uh, not oh, I'm being grilled here. Oh. That's not how it works. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I think it's not a secret uh, anymore. You uh, just uh, told us that you are, have a new partner in uh, Scandinavia, in Denmark, and uh, it's Centropa. Uh, and uh, how did that come? And also, what was your motivation? And I think it's a uh, a big step for, for the Thai film now. And it's actually interesting because it is linked to the question that you asked me. Um, yeah, we just teamed up with Centropa, which is Lars von Trier's company in Copenhagen. We started a joint venture with them. So I, we have our company Detail Film and, and, and now we opened up shop with Centropa and it's called Centropa Hamburg. The idea behind it was that last year after Berlinale we thought, what's next for us? We've had two films in the festivals and we got a lot of attention and we really made a step forward. And um, um, because Art House is so difficult, we said, you know, what are we going to do for the next five years? We always think in, in five-year terms. And what's our strategy for this? And my company partner said, we should do Centropa Hamburg, um, which at that time was not an option because they had already two companies in Germany, two satellites. And so to make it short, our idea is, because we've done a lot of minority co-productions, and there are a lot of work, and there's very little money in it. It was great for us to kind of get a name, get experience, build our network, meet beautiful people, make great films, tell awesome stories. But um, if, you're, if you're growing older and you have a family, it's like the same old story. All of a sudden you find yourself in the same old story that you've heard before. You figure that, that you, just can't, you just can't keep on going. And you want to grow, you want to make bigger projects. So, um, so actually, funnily enough, Centropa Hamburg is probably going to be our outlet. And the idea is brand new. It's like 48 hours kind of that we've been toying around with this idea because we didn't know what it would be. So Tropa Hamburg is probably going to be the outlet that we're developing German, uh, German projects with. And uh, through, the, through the collaboration with our Danish partners, those German, um, those German uh, films are going to have a different 
kind of a different, they're going to be different German films. They're going to be German because we're going to produce them, but we have an international partner who comes in with an international expertise and an international point of view. So, so there's supposed to be films that, that, um, that tell us something about Germany um, that hasn't been told so far or not enough. Um, and Detail Film is going to be our company that we do our international co-productions with. So, um, yeah, it's brand new. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and uh, they're a great bunch of people, so I think we're going to have fun. So, any questions? Oh, where? When? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much for your great presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, writer directors from other countries who want to do an absolute German film in German language, uh, and if they find a German partner, is there a point system like Euromarch point system that your nationality matters and then things like that? Or it could be uh, actualized in Germany? Yeah, there is something like a point system. This is what um, Mariette said. Um, if you want to apply for subsidy, then you need this official letter. And um, this is based on a, not, not like Euromarch, so not, it's, you have only a few points, but it says that, for example, um, if you want to make a co-production, then you need 20% from Germany, then you, if you um, make a co but I think it's the director, for example, can come from every country in the world, but you have to, um, you have to hire people in Europe. Our law is, this is very important, we haven't uh, say this, um, we in Germany, we are very open for Europe. So it means, if we say um, people from Germany, it means also people from Europe. Um, so you have to hire people from from Europe, and there is a system, but I think it's, um, if you want to know more about it, ask me afterwards, because I can tell you now for one hour about these little points, um, and I think this is just a little boring right now. My actual question is not a co-production, it's a German production. You oh, still need. You still need. The, real, yeah, real, I think ah. Hanning was shaking his hand. Her, his yeah, head no, 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 not at all. No, no. It's if you are just a director and you're working with a German producer, and you're the only international element in this whole setup, then it's fine. It's fine. You, you can definitely make it work. Okay. So yes, that works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we we're talking oh, about co-production, so obviously you're kind yeah. of. Anyone else? Yes, please. Hello, thanks for the presentation. Um, my name is Felix, I'm a director from Germany and I'm currently working on a 90 minute um, documentary about nutrition. We'll be talking about um, nutrition with some experts from the USA. So I'm still looking for a producer. What would be your advice to start looking for that? Well, no, about nutrition. Well, yes. look at the documentaries that you like, the German documentaries that you like, look at who produced them, and reach out to the producer. I mean, because you want to find the person that you know that, that you connect to, and you want to, yeah. to find the person that makes the kind of film that you that you envision. So, look at all the German documentaries that you can, that you possibly can, and then find find the right guy and just call him up, set up a meeting. Okay. And then you'll see. Thank you want to find a German producer? I did understand that German producer. Yes. Mm. Yeah, same thing. This is what we always say because I, I have phone calls like this and somebody asking me and I can't tell them go go to that producer or that producer because it's such a personal relationship they should have. But um, I always tell them see the list, see our funding list, see what we funded the last year and see what kind of movie you want to make and what production company did it. Yeah, and check carefully, but not only artistical wise, but only personal wise, because it's a kind of a marriage, yes. and yeah. uh, it really has to fit on a on a personal level as well. So be ca choose carefully. Okay, yeah. right. Thanks. And uh, may I? Yeah. Sure. Uh, this is a wonderful question because it's very focused on one. Um, I think I can say yes. That's that's absolutely true. And we have a documentary. We have a wonderful festival in Germany. It's Leipzig. And they really, they give a very, very good platform. If you go there, if you know, okay, this kind of um, documentary, or producers for documentaries, I want to meet, 
then you can ask them if they really met you, because they do a lot of things um, for documentaries, and they can help you with German producers, also for, for international, so there is Leipzig, the, the real, the, the main focus for you. One last question up there. You just talked about, and I would actually like to ask you to that topic, um, why you think that German films are not really universally uh, able to... <laughs> Can we? No, let's not. Wonderful I, I question. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and maybe if something's too. changing in the future, you could just quickly... <laughs> it absolutely is going to change in the future, that I can tell you. It's absolutely going to change, but I don't think that this is the forum to discuss this. That, that could go on. We can talk outside if you, if you want. Yes, please. One last question. <laughs> no disrespect. No, not the same way. Thank you for uh, your information. Well, actually, I'm a Greek director, um, Bernal de Talents here, and, but I live and I have studied in Berlin. So I work in Berlin like the last two years now. <coughs> so I have a project that I only want to shoot in Greece. It will be, can be like German production with a minor co-production in Greece or it can be the opposite. I mean, like, my question is like, where we should start? For German funding or I have to approach the Greek first? Well, if it's a Greek language film shot in, shot in Greece, you're probably better off starting in, in Greece, finding your producer there, to be honest. That is the natural, that's kind of like, if you look at this project, that would be the natural way to go. Um, again, because you need to have enough, um, enough interest out of, that, uh, out, of your, out of your own country. I mean, you live in Berlin and you work here, but still, this would be considered, right? It would be considered to be more or less a, a majoritively Greek film, I guess. Well, the thing that I didn't mention, yes, sorry, the thing like that I didn't mention is like, it's based on a novel, but the novel is German, from a German writer. But the action takes place in uh, Greece. So it's German language? Yeah, it can be German language, but I mean, she lives also, it's German uh, author who lives in Greece. And with, <laughs> oh, it's getting more and more it's, it's totally, it's totally okay. like uh, European co-production, what to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, yeah. as the main producer is in, in, is in Germany. Yeah, I have German and also Greek producer. But I want to see where it can be looked for. I mean, the, which, which country can be like a it's majority country? It's more and more complicated. Maybe you should talk with your funding advice. Yeah, or <laughs> let, the, let the producers figure it out, actually. It's not your job. It's their job, too. You should focus on writing the script or working with the script writer and getting everything. You know, you should take care of the whole direction department. Don't get into the, don't get into the production parts of it. They'll figure it out. I'm, I'm sure they will. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay, there's one, one really last question, then you're here for you to go. Hello, I have a question to the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership. How it um, would uh, change the landscape of co-production and also of funding? Wow, is that a I'm uh, does anybody want to answer? Because it, this is really a big question. It's a big political discussion, and it's really kind of. I'm sorry to say, but I feel it's it's not it's not the right forum forum for such a huge question. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's it's and it's still in the making, and so I think. So, any last words for the, all these talented filmmakers from your side? Anything that you always wanted to tell people? Oh, oh, oh. We wish you luck. I think. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. I just want to repeat my invitation for this afternoon. See you all at five o'clock at the How One. <laughs> for the awards. Yeah. And um, yeah, um, and have good fun and go to see movies and enjoy the Berlinale. And Berlin, of course. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Wishing you a great festival. See you in the next year.